There's no easy way to say this, but your baby has a catastrophic brain abnormality. Well, what, what does that mean? It means that parts of her brain didn't form. Your daughter, if she is to survive, will live only a matter of hours after birth. During that time, she will experience a multitude of seizures and ultimately aspirate on her own bodily fluids. She will suffer. A decision will need to be made on termination. I wish I could tell you what to do, but there's only one person who can make this choice. How, how much time do I have? And that person is Greg. Greg? Who the f is Greg? Yeah, let me just give him a call. Hey, Greg. Dr. Robinson here. What you just saw was a new ad by Mothers Against Greg, Greg Abbott Pack. Uh, and it's quite a doozy because it shows what the real situation is in the state of Texas where abortions have been banned, where abortion providers are terrified to provide care to women in the case of something like a miscarriage, for instance. And there are already stories to share with you involving real women who have suffered the consequences and we'll outline them for you in just a moment. But it's important to keep in mind that the ad is not in any way hyperbole, it's not an exaggeration. What we're seeing in red states across the country, including in Texas, is a an effort and also the execution of policies that put politicians, particularly white conservative males, between women and their doctors. And I want to outline one particular story that was covered in the New York Times about a 35-year-old woman named Amanda. Amanda and her husband want to have children, they tried and unfortunately she miscarried, not once but twice. But her two miscarriages led to different experiences thanks to what the policies were in Texas at the time. Now before abortion was banned in Texas, she and her husband tried to get pregnant. She did get pregnant and within her first trimester, unfortunately she was saddened to learn that she suffered a miscarriage. The fetus did not have a heartbeat, she was miscarrying and in order to ensure that she doesn't hemorrhage from it or have some sort of infection as a result of that non viable fetal tissue. The hospital offered to do a surgical procedure that's the same surgical procedure that's done during a regular first trimester abortion. At a large hospital, a doctor performed a surgical procedure often used as a safe and quick method to remove tissue from a failed pregnancy. She awoke from anesthesia to find a card signed by the nurses and a little pink and blue bracelet with a butterfly charm, a gift from the hospital to express compassion for her loss. It was so sweet because it's such a hard thing to go through, Amanda said. Now, eight months later, unfortunately, she suffered another miscarriage. Remember, she and her husband desperately want to have children. But by the time she had her second miscarriage, laws had changed in Texas. And the same facility that she went to for care denied her the care that she had previously received. So she said she went to the same hospital, Baylor Scott and White Medical Center, doubled over in pain and screaming as she passed a large blood clot. But when she requested the same surgical evacuation procedure called dilation and curatage or DNC, she said the hospital told her no, a DNC is the same procedure used for some abortions. Now, she, they were terrified that if they actually did this, even though they're dealing with a miscarriage, that the state would come after them. And the way that it would work is, of course, some private citizen can report this facility and the doctors that provide the care could get into a lot of trouble. The hospital sent her home, according to the New York Times, with instructions to return only, only if she was bleeding so excessively that her blood filled a diaper more than once an hour. Hospital records, I'm sorry, hospital records that Amanda shared with the New York Times noted that her embryo had no cardiac activity during the visit and on an ultrasound a week earlier. She reports having a lot of pain and she appears distressed, the record said. Amanda said she sat on the toilet digging fingernail marks in my wall from the pain. She then moved to the bathtub where 
Her husband held her hand as they both cried. The bathtub water is just dark red, Amanda recalled. For 48 hours, it was like a constant heavy bleed and big clots. In other words, because she was denied the care that she needed, she could have very easily died. And the experience was so dangerous and so traumatic that she and her husband have now decided that they will stop trying to get pregnant because they don't want to go through the dangerous scenario of having a miscarriage in the state of Texas again. And again, I'm giving you guys that very gruesome, graphic, detailed story because what the ad that we showed you earlier depicted is not hyperbole, it is not an exaggeration. This is now a reality for women across the country thanks to individuals who lie to you and tell you that they care about protecting life. When in reality, as we know, it's all about control, it's all about forcing polit- like forcing women to do what male politicians want them to do or what religious leaders think they should do. Essentially, people who have nothing to do with this woman Amanda getting them between her and her doctors. That is what's happening in Texas and many other red states across this country right now. And if you think it's just gonna be red states and red states alone, you'd be mistaken. They're focusing on making this federal law. I'll get to that in just a moment. But Farron, I'd like you to jump in and share your perspective, especially as someone from Florida, where Ron DeSantis wants to pass similar legislation. Yeah, I mean, it's horrific. And honestly, it's kind of shocking that we don't already have women that have died from this. We we know it's coming, we know it will eventually happen, that we will have women in this country who will die. Because you have these conservative men, and unfortunately too many conservative women as well, who don't even understand medical science. They don't understand basic human biology. They they don't know anything about the human body really. And they're passing these laws to regulate it, which will be a death sentence for far too many women in this country. The horror stories like the one you just told, that's one of several that have been making the headlines in just the last week that we have seen. Women forced to carry dead fetuses for weeks because they cannot get a doctor to remove it from their bodies. That is dangerous. I mean, I I have family members that have gone through miscarriages. I have family members that have given birth to stillborn babies. It is a horrifying experience, but they were able to immediately get medical care because at the time we didn't have these laws in place here. They went to the hospital, they got everything you know fixed to the degree they had. Obviously, you're still dealing with the emotional trauma from that. And what I'm thinking here as somebody who's seen the emotional damage this does to individuals. How much more is that emotional damage amplified when a woman has to then live with it, live with the pain, live with the dead fetus in the body for weeks? I mean, we're talking about psychological damage that likely will not be repaired for these women. And that's another thing that that nobody's talking about either is the psychological part of what this is doing to the women going through these horrific stories here. Well, look, this is my opinion, but I don't think that the psychological damage that women are are facing now and will continue to face in coming years is the bug, it's the feature. I think this is part of certain individuals with certain political views wanting to be able to control women regardless of what they go through both physically and psychologically. And what I find really fascinating about all of these stories that are coming out, including the story of the 10 year old girl who was raped and got pregnant as a result of that rape in Ohio. You see these right wingers who have defended anti-abortion policies run away from those anecdotes, run away from those stories, want to deny that those stories exist. And my question is, why do they want to deny it? Aren't they proud of what they've been touting, what they've been fighting for for decades? I mean, in their minds, a 10 year old who gets pregnant as a result of rape should be forced to have her rapist baby. 
That is what they believe. That's why many of these red states have banned abortion, even in the case of rape. So if you are going to tout that kind of policy, you should be able to defend it. You should be willing to stand by those policies, even if there's a gruesome story involving a 10 year old who got raped. Even if we're talking about a 35 year old woman who nearly died as a result of her miscarriage and was denied care when she desperately needed it. You should be able to defend that, but they're unwilling to. They immediately deflect and they immediately go to the place of this isn't real, this isn't happening, but it's very much real. And if you think that conservatives in this country will just stop at allowing red states to ban abortion, you'd be mistaken. In fact, here is former Vice President Mike Pence, someone that people wrongly referred to as a hero when he did the bare minimum on January 6th, telling us what he plans to do. Now it falls to this generation to take the case for life to every state and every state house in America. Our freedom agenda calls for advancing pro-life protections in every state in the union, every single one. We call for expanding support for women in crisis pregnancies to support the unborn and to support the newborn with equal American generosity. And finally, we call for ending all taxpayer funding of abortion and defunding Planned Parenthood once and for all. Now let's not forget that Planned Parenthood provides primary health care to men and women across the country, especially in rural areas that don't have hospitals. But final question for you, Farron, thoughts on Mike Pence Using the word freedom in the context of controlling women's bodies. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's the. I, I don't want to make a comparison to 1984, but I almost feel like I should. But they use words to mean the opposite of what they actually mean here. And you know, is, is American generosity is the phrase that really kind of stuck out to me. Like, what the heck does that even mean? Where in America? Are we being generous with anything right now? Totally. I mean, from the economy to, to greedflation, to the rights that we're stripping away, like we are becoming a, a, a hugely oppressive country financially, uh, environmentally. Uh, we're oppressive with these rights and Mike Pence is up there with all of this confidence, with all of this bravado, riding on this big wave of, oh, he was so great in January 6th, I can't wait to see what he does next. He is a monster. Yep. He is the same kind of monster that Donald Trump is, or that Ron DeSantis is, or that Greg Abbott is. He's just in a different wrapper. He is the same horrible candy filling that the rest of them are. And right now, I think there's at least six different pieces of legislation in the House that Republicans have written mm -hmm. that would, in one way or another, ban abortion on the federal level. They have made it clear when they take back the House, they're going to start pushing these things. That's why they have these drafts ready. There's the bill in the North Carolina State House that would make it legal for you to kill another person that performs an abortion. Or a woman who takes a, a plan B pill, that, that piece of legislation has been stalled in committee in the North Carolina State House for a year. But it still exists written by Republicans that they're so pro-life will literally kill you if you try to end a pregnancy. It's, it's nuts, but that's where we are. We, we have to deal with the nuts because yeah. they are pushing us further and further here. No, we don't have to deal with the nuts. Uh, we have to defeat them. We have to fight aggressively. We have to stay focused on accomplishing what we need to accomplish and not get distracted by other garbage. What they've done is effective because they were strategic about dismantling reproductive rights pretty soon. I'm, I have no doubt that they'll have the Supreme Court dismantle other rights that were previously granted to Americans by a previous Supreme Court that wasn't ideologically driven and wasn't extremely right wing. But make no mistake about it, they're not done. And their terrible policies will not stop at stripping women of their rights. They want to force theocratic rule on the rest of us. And it's not because they even believe in that theology. It's not because they want to protect anyone's life. I mean, come on. Remember George, Kill, uh, George Tiller, who was a, a, an abortion provider, an abortion doctor? He was murdered by a, a, a pro-life activist. 
slash murderer slash terrorist. Like that's that is what we have seen in this country. And we have to fight back. We have to stay focused on this issue and many others. Otherwise, they're gonna run roughshod and they're going to dismantle all the freedoms that we've appreciated and enjoyed in this country.